clothes and handbags, mm, a status symbol, designer baby. Well, that's something else altogether. Dr. Thompson joining us this morning with the latest advancements in conception and selection. Good morning, Arizona. Modified humans could alter the genome of our entire species because their engineered traits will be passed on to their children and could spread over generations, slowly modifying the whole gene pool of humanity. Well, genetic engineering has begun to prevent illness, but the door is open to modify other traits, right? Say height, eye color. Hmm, it seems like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie, but during in vitro fertilization, there are many choices that can be made. Dr. Sharon Thompson of Central Phoenix Obstetrics and Gynecology is joining us this morning to talk all about it and what people often refer to as designer babies or super babies. Sure. Uh, the term designer babies is a smidge misleading mm -hmm. because it, it brings to mind a menu. And yes. so you choose blue eyes and right. tall, mm -hmm. et cetera. But many traits uh, that we have the genetics are not clear yet. Okay. The promise of, of genetic engineering is really disease prevention and treatment. Okay. So there are many diseases that are devastating. Fortunately, many of them are rare, but sickle cell anemia is an mm -hmm. example of a disease that really can have such significant health effects that's caused by a single change in our genes. Okay. And so there's a potential now to take that mistake out, that mutation out, and replace the correct sequence and cure that disease. So that's already happening. It is not happening yet, okay. but, but the technology is there. The technology is the, there. The technology to um, go into a chromosome, mm -hmm. remove a mistake, and replace it is there. The, the research right now is in the in the lab stage. Okay, yet. so that would be during the in vitro fertilization process when an embryo is already created, or would that be something that is done to, say, the follicles or the sperm prior to that fertilization? That is a great question. There is technology available today um, in the in vitro fertilization process mm -hmm. to remove a single cell from that early embryo, do some testing on that cell, and only replace the embryos that don't have the disease. And there's certainly some families who utilize that technology. Okay. In the future, though, we will be able to take even stem cells. Let's say uh, someone's affected by uh, cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. You take a stem cell from that person, you remove the, the problem gene, uh -huh. replace it with the normal gene, and now give those stem cells back with the potential that those stem cells can populate the correct area of the body and cure the disease. That's in the future. We are hearing right now about people selecting the gender of a baby. Now that is is happening in in vitro or not? That is possible, but it generally doesn't happen. Okay. People who are doing in vitro fertilization, first of all, they want a baby. Yeah. So most of those families are happy with any baby mm -hmm. that they get, boy or girl. There are certainly some families who have genetic problems in the family that uh, affect boys disproportionately oh, okay. or girls. And then that family might select for girls because they know that disease won't be present. Okay. So there's no sex selection in that, oh, I want a boy this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is rarely, rarely done in the United States, if ever. So some of the positives mm -hmm. would be uh, eliminating the higher risk of a certain diseases and illnesses that may be known to be part of a family. Um, some of the other ones you, you uh, listed with me would be even increasing lifespan or other otherwise Absolutely. overall better health. Molecular biology and genetic engineering is such an exciting field. Mm -hmm. We are living at the cusp of those changes though and probably uh, our children like Nate who turned mm -hmm. five, um, is he will see the benefit of, of this technology. And the next generation. Most likely be one in our lifetime, but we're looking at what uh, causes cells to live longer. Okay. Scientists are looking at Gosh. that and in the future being able to manipulate that. It is fascinating yeah. and it's I know you, you, you very quickly as we're wrapping up uh, listed some of the potential uh, pitfalls of all of this Absolutely. as this progresses. We always have to think about how these technologies are available and who they're available mm -hmm. to. Unless we do something, you know, rich folks will get these benefits yeah. and the rest of us will be, you know, left with whatever problems we're born with. It'll able to buy your way into exactly. better health, so longer lives. So as a society, lives. we have to think about these sorts of issues. And imagine that some of these things would be abused in, in some form Absolutely. or another. Dr. Thompson, thank you so much. It is always You're so great welcome. to see you. We will take Thanks a quick break. Me. More Good Morning Arizona coming right up.